I'm gonna change up how I did the, the outlet for this tank. Um, I'll show you in the video, but what I did is the, the valve for this tank, I modified it to where a hose with a strainer and floats would attach to it. And that, that would keep the water that's leaving the tank suspended between the sludge on the bottom and whatever debris does get in there that's floating. completed that project, looked down inside the top of this tote, and I could see algae all in it, and, and I, I know it, it needs to be cleaned, and then I started thinking, well, the cleaning process is going to be difficult, if the only way I can get the water out is going to be that hose with the strainer that's floating in there. Um, so I decided to put a bulkhead fitting in the tank, in this valve. I'll remove all of the, what I've already got hooked up on that valve so we'll be able to drain the tank fast and you know as we're cleaning up water will be running out. For this, it's, all it is is a brass fitting with two washers or seals and then the nut. Drill a hole in it, stick this from the inside out put the other gasket on and tighten it down. And it's threaded all the way through. So the fitting this in the tank, I'll be able to screw in before I put this through the hole out of the tank. And then after, I'll be able to just put this ball valve on. I still have the ability in winter time to be able to turn it off and disconnect the hose when we're gonna have the coldest part of the year. And it'll be easy if we go out there um, to hook right back up. We very rarely have, you know, a whole week of freezing weather in South Carolina, where I'm at anyway. So it's just those days that you're not there. You know, if you don't prepare for it in advance, that's the day that it's going to get cold enough to start breaking things. So, anyway, I'm going to get started. Um, show a clip or video of the, the first attempt of doing this and using the existing valve to get started. Let's see. I want to put it right in here. I think it'll fit. So the valve goes there. Uh -oh. That's probably going to be a challenge. Guess nothing says that valve can't be like this though. I think that's 
that's what I'm going to do. Surprised on the spoil kid fitting. Seems like most of them that I've messed with, which hadn't been a lot, have left handed threads on it, and this is right handed threads. So uh, every time you go to tighten this up, you'll be loosening it. We can figure something out though. see more challenges coming up here. I might not have to take the tank out of the cage. Did a little bit to the right, but that's gonna be fine. That's pretty neat. The um, that step bit when I pulled it back out, it deburred the back side. So, that's scary. Things start working out in my favor. Sometimes that means bad things are gonna be happening. We'll see. Hmm. I can do a, a nipple and an elbow or something like that if it starts giving me some challenges. concerned about this leaking but this also it's not on my tapered thread and I'm pretty sure when I ordered it the spec said that it was that fans give me a hard time I'll lob this up. It'll be more for keeping it from unscrewing purposes than anything else.
We'll have to go on after the fact. So they're tightening this up is actually loosening the fitting. See how that does. Um, the drilling through this section right here. This is feels like it's more than a quarter of an inch thick, and it's obvious that it's not as thick right here. So I'm glad I did this. Uh, even if I have to get a different bulkhead fitting, if this becomes a problem, it's okay. Um, and if I have to do a nipple coming out and an elbow to get this valve. It, that'll be fine too. But I don't think we're going to have any issues at all. So now I can drain this. Any problems? There's not ideal to have the ball valve this way because if you have sharp debris, it, it tends to fall down into grooves and cut up the seal that's around here. But hopefully, we won't be opening this hardly ever. So There's no option to do it upside down either. So. Thank you. 
come out of this with all of our digits. And I know the battery went dead. Well, do this again. So this piece is going down into the tote. Um, I think that's a whole piece. Then the screen. I'll try and get another picture of it. But the idea is, can you see that? So, uh, this is going to be sitting all, all, almost on the bottom of the tote. Water from the gutter is going to come through. First, it'll have to come through this sink strainer. Pick it up at most grocery stores even, but I got that one from Lowe's or Home Depot, one of the two. Uh, if anything gets past your gutter protection whether it's rain guard or some cheap off brand like I have that needs to be changed out to a real good stainless steel micro mesh that's that's on that list um, but this will catch those odd things that maybe came through so extra level of protection I use that one and in, in the pack that I get three of them so I put all three of them in there so that'll go in the tank from the gutter water will come in come down and then it'll come up into the bulk of the water that's in the tank that way it's not disturbing the water on the bottom of the tank or the trash that could be on the bottom of the tank and most likely it's not going to disturb the surface floating stuff if it does, it probably it won't be anywhere near as bad as if the water's just coming in from the top of the tote like that. So that's what I'm gonna do with the tote. Try and put this together, and part two is gonna be the uh, first flush. I'll give you a couple of views of the fittings I'm, this will be my third first flush to build and this one is the one that I'm I'm the most pleased with so we get just the pieces So the 
the first flush that I'm going to build this time, this piece is an adapter. It's PVC. It's made, really, it's made to, um, on an exhaust fan for like a bathroom. This will change the size of the little flex duct that comes off of it from the fan size to a four inch flex or vice versa. I think this is, let's see if it says three to four inch bath fan increaser. So it's designed to go on the fan and increase the size of the flex duct that comes off of it. The neat thing about that is, is inside this T, the outside diameter of this is exactly the inside diameter of the reduced part of the profile inside this T. So this will slip in there. We'll get a good fit. My plans are to put this in and with glue on it, it does come up in this a little bit. That's okay with me. Water's going to be coming down and this will be going over to the, that's going to go to the tote and the bottom part's going to go to the first flush, the wasted water or the dirty water. We won't say it's wasted because it's dirty. This piece is on a, the older style commodes have a float and it's on a valve. And when you flush a commode, the flap opens, water goes down, flush the commode. This is what turns the fill valve off as it comes up, it shuts that fill valve off. It's connected to an arm. These, the first, first, the very first, first flush that I made they were in all of the hardware stores and now they're hard to get a hold to. I had to mail order this, so you may have to you may have to find you a ball that's about the same size. Just make sure that it's outside diameter is smaller than the inside of this pipe, but bigger than this adapter. So what's gonna happen is This piece right here is going to be the wasted water or the dirty water to first flush, and this float will be inside this pipe. Move that. As the water fills up in that dirty water section, the diverter pipe, the float will come up in there and it'll seal off on that three inch. adapter. Once that happens, no more water is going to go in there. Water is going to fill up the rest of this and then it's going to start running out into your tote. Um, this float ball is going to prevent that water that keeps on going down. If you don't have the float, what's going to happen is you still have that water coming through and it's going to mix with that dirty water. Pollen and you name it all the stuff that you wanted to get off your roof before you started to putting the water in your tank. So with that floating up, that's going to stop that from happening. You're not going to mix that dirty water and you're going to have the water that comes off of your roof that's been washed by mother nature, you know, the rain raining on it. It's come over and it goes into your tote. So that's, that's the key part of that. Now to make it a little less maintenance on it. I ordered this strainer. The strainer's made for it's a whole house sand or I'm not real sure what it calls. I'll the information of this will be in, in the description. But fortunately, it fits inside of a one inch fitting like it was made for it. So I'm gonna use a one inch to three quarter slip to MPT adapter. This is a sewer clean out. It's 
so it's the I think they call this an adapter it's a female adapter four inch and this is a cap for it the cap I'm gonna drill a hole in this three-quarter inch on the inside this is gonna go in we'll have to knock the corners off of two of these corners off of this so it'll fit in but I'll cut that down this will stick through come out the other side and this coupling will screw on to it and they'll we'll tighten them down all the way like that and that gives us um, the automatic reset feature on the first flush this cap or plug I'll drill I think the bit that I'm going to use is a one it's a one thirty second of an inch hole will be drilled in this so this mesh is going to prevent particles that are large enough to block or clog up this hole so this will be assembled like this going through the center of that as it rains you're going to have more water than than can go through this hole. The water level will go up and through that diverter, the dirty water. And this is going to have water coming out of it the whole time, but you know nowhere as much as you come have coming off the roof. So the float will continuously be getting enough water to float up and block off what's coming in if it drains down it'll drop just enough water will be coming in and it'll just constantly be resetting um, this will have to be cleaned this one's about twice the surface area of the one I have at the cabin now and I've gone several weeks without going out there and it's still the had not clogged up enough to stop the water from draining out so this will give us some more time now this all of this what's nice about it if you want to pay the price you can buy this right there in most of the hardware stores it's a replacement for our sand filter all these fittings are in the hardware store this is in the hardware store this if you're willing to pay twenty dollars for it they, you can still buy this ball with the entire tank filling valve, you know, fill valve assembly. Order them online or find you a toy plastic ball that doesn't have any holes in it. That adapters in Lowe's and in Home Depot, at least where I live. In fact, I think the SKU number even is the same in both stores. Don't, don't hold me to that, but I think it is. This is a plain T, four inch T for wastewater pipe. My experience in the area that I live, if I buy these at Home Depot, the outside diameter of this is exactly the same as the pressure pipe or the Schedule 40 pipe. And that That will allow this piece to go right inside. Look, I grabbed the wrong one. This one I bought from Lowe's. That one I bought from Lowe's. That one I bought from Home Depot. It's the same, same fitting. It's even the same name brand. If anybody knows what the scoop is on that, let me know. It's interesting. Be interesting. Find out. Um, NDS is the manufacturer. NDS. So they're still two different sizes. Lowe's, Home Depot.
Let me know what you think on that. I, I, I would love to understand why two different stores sells the same brand fittings and there are different tolerances on them. So, try this again. I think most of the video I did when I was showing this, I believe my head was chopped off. Probably about eye level. Trying to fix that. You know, good quality videos and stuff like that. So, um, so this is another sink strainer. I know I have footage on my other camera, but I think I have it set up where it's a close up, hopefully. I think I'm aiming at that. So, this one just has plastic. And I see this one in most grocery stores and hardware stores that I go in, along with that set that's three of them, three different sizes. One is three different sizes. I put in as a extra precaution of water going into the tote. And this one's gonna be for, you know, keeping bugs and stuff from crawling up the overflow. It'll come out of that T and come down. And it'll be in this 45. Yeah. So uh, what I did is I took these nippers and cut this plastic edge down. Did have to take my knife and dress the edges a little bit. But the idea is inside these fittings, there's a rim that keeps you from sliding the pipe in further than it needs to go. So cut this. What I did is I just set the pipe on top, traced it out with a pencil, and cut it on the line. So, after you get that done, just push it in. to your fitting until it hits that stop just like that and when you put your pipe in as long as it's sandwiched between the piece coming off right here for the overflow and that it'll keep it sandwiched in there and you're going to keep the bugs out of your tank whatever tries to crawl up in there out of the tank now on the tank that i already have at the cabin I just used a piece of hardware cloth, and that's a quarter by quarter grid hardware cloth. And I cut it and shoved it up in here. Cut it larger than this open opening, and uh, pushed it up in there, and it's just stayed. But you know, ants and anything smaller than a quarter inch square could can climb up in there, and you know, most of these bugs can just walk right up this pipe. So this will be better. Um, only your smallest little ants could probably get through the grid that's on these strainers. So, I'm anxious to get this out there and have more water at the cabin. Uh, every time I take this toad out to the cabin when we go, it keeps me from taking my four-wheeler. And uh, I like having my four-wheeler out there. So this will be nice, a nice improvement. Having more water, we can still fill up the swimming pool. Uh, kitty pool and uh, be able to take nice showers not worry about it since we're just there you know two or three nights whenever we go out there and I'm going to end this at, at this park and the next part of this video will probably be out at the cabin since I went over how these go together you know all I'm gonna do is cut the lengths of PVC and assemble it um, I probably will cut this little section off right here again I, I really don't think that it's gonna have any effect on how this works it may even work better leaving it there thanks for uh, checking out the video and hopefully you'll come back for part two Thank you.